Hi everyone, this month uh, my subscribers on 1mafx.com and Patreon they voted for Stylized Tornado and we'll be creating it from scratch on those platforms and, and in this video we're gonna dive into Houdini and we're gonna create uh, meshes for that effect. I am going to split this into two parts. In the first one, we're gonna cover the main shape in Houdini. And then in the second part, we're gonna extract some uh, lines from the main tornado and we're gonna turn them into the swirls that you can see that goes uh, around the tornado and at the base as well. All right, so let's dive into Houdini and let's create those meshes. Okay, so I'm just gonna press tab on my keyboard, get a geometry node, and I'm going to rename it to Tornado Scratch. Cool, in here I'm just gonna get a line. Uh, all I need is the default uh, values. Uh, also, I have enabled points here, so I can actually see those blue dots. That's gonna illustrate the points uh, for me. Right, so once I have the line, I'm going to use the resample. And in here we can change the number of uh, segments that we are uh, going to need. And I think I'm just going to go with the low amount, let's say four. And ideally I would like to isolate or at least group the top and the bottom. So I'm going to uh, get the group next. I'm gonna end this, uh, sorry, I'm gonna call this group ends. Replace the group type to points, disable the base group and keep the bounding region. I'm gonna move the center to 0.5 so it sits in the middle. And I'm just gonna lower it, this one on the scale to maybe 0.9, just to make sure that the, the top point and the bottom point is deselected. Okay, group, I'm gonna press space and type ends just as a reference for myself that this is uh, the name of this uh, group. Next, I'm gonna use point uh, jitter, not this one. Point jitter, there it is. In here, I'm gonna zero the uh, Y axis because actually I don't wanna move uh, those points on the axis. I only wanna move them left and right, just like this. However, I want my points to be pinned in the same location. So now I can just select the group ends I've created and those two will be snapped to, the, to their original location. Okay, I'm gonna actually, um, I'm gonna leave it at one and then obviously we can go back and uh, tweak it a little bit. Actually, maybe one might be too much. Let's turn it down maybe to point three so we have a nice line and if we have to, we can come back here and tweak the scale number later on. All right, so after this, I would like to smooth this out. So it's going to be another resample node. I'm going to enable the max segments. I'm going to go for a higher number, maybe somewhere around 20 or 17. I think maybe 17. And also I'm going to check this for subdivision curves. It's going to smooth it even further. Cool. Next, I'm gonna drop my uh, sweep node. I'm gonna select here uh, the round tube. Okay, for the columns, gonna go with the eight. We can tweak the radius if we want to later on. I'm gonna enable the scale here. And I'm gonna try to design this uh, slightly so I want kind of wider opening at the bottom and then I'm gonna turn it down and create that kind of curve. I think I'm just gonna select all the points and change them from linear to Bezier as well. So they're gonna create a smoother transition for me. I think that's pretty cool. Now I can go back here to my radius 
and see if I can actually uh, tweak the value of that radius now. So I'm gonna maybe put it 0.3. So it's quite wide. And I think this could work. For the different shapes, I can always go back to my point jitter and play with this uh, seed value. Uh, there are a couple issues with this. And my main issue is, as you can see, the bottom and the top are rotated. And I was trying to figure out how I can actually snap them to be straight, uh, pointing down or up. And the only way I found was a, a little hack. So let's uh, introduce that hack. Uh, let me show you the points, All right? So let me go back to my resample and I only discovered this by adding two points that's going to be extending here and at the bottom as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create add here and in this add, I'm going to press the plus button. I'm going to add the point to the height of 1.05. So it will be just a little above our uh, other point. I'm going to go to uh, polygon, but I'm going to select this option as well in here and select by group. As you can see, it's going to create uh, the curve again. I'm going to duplicate this point, this add node rather, go into it and for the point I'm going to go to the minus value. So that'll be minus 0.05. We're going to have another point here at the bottom, you can see. Okay, next I'm going to sort those points because they have a, a number added to them. So I'm just going to sort them. And I would like to sort them by Y axis. And the last thing I'm going to create add point here. However, I'm going to delete everything I've got, go to polygon, remove unused points and by group as well. And that's going to create another curve for me. Okay. So lastly, just going to get another resample just to smooth it out with subdivisions for the segments. I'm going to go for the same number I had before, maybe uh, 17. Or actually, we can go even with this maximum segment on the default uh, value. And I'm going to try to plug this into our sweep that we've made just to see if it's if it's going to work. And as you can see, there is a minimal change to it. So let's actually go to this. Uh, well, before we had add, so I'm going to have a resample here, add null just for the comparison. I'm going to plug this one in here. So there is a little of difference, but not too much. So I'm just going to plug this resample back again. And in here, I'm going to uh, check in this tick box. And that should solve our issue a little bit. Okay, but created another one at the top, but it's fine. We're going to tweak it uh, in a minute. So here, this edge seems to be more or less straight, which I'm okay with. And I'm going to go to the first point we've added, which was that one. And I'm going to increase that value, say point 1.1. And as you can see, this straighten a little bit that edge at the top. I'm going to go to this resample node and get the maximum segments maybe. And I'm going to play with this uh, value. Or actually, let's skip that one because I think that one gave me uh, slightly better results. Uh, in here, in the sweep node, we can add some uh, columns to it, maybe. So I'm going to double it to 16, so it's a bit more smooth. And I'm going to head back to my point jitter and play with that seat to get a slightly better shape without any pinching around this area. Okay, so I think something like this might be uh, okay. Right, so next bit, I want to go back to my sweep node because I need to enable a couple things here. Uh, for the end caps, I don't want any. Uh, I'm going to go to construction, or UVs, computer UVs, and normalize them as well. Uh, let me demonstrate what it does. So in here, without this, uh, the UVs normally would be stretched outside. So I'm just going to 
I'm always um, taking that tick box on just to make sure they gonna fit into zero to one space. Okay, and let me go back to my perspective uh, view. Cool, so now we have uh, UVs for it. I'm gonna add some uh, vertex color as well. So let's get a gradient color. That's from the labs. If you don't have labs, go into side effects labs tab or enable that shelf through here and then get the tool set using the first button. But at this point, I think everyone is using labs, but if not, that's the option for you to go and download it. Right, so let's get uh, to this. Uh, in here, I've got Y axis, which is what I want. I'm gonna drag this one here. Uh, the one at the end, I want this to be black color because I'm gonna use that as an alpha in a game engine. In here, maybe 0.3 and at 0.7, I want another white value. So that will be fully um, opaque or transparent in my uh, in the game engine. Okay. Uh, let's see. As you can see, it's just a little bit jagged edge here and right there as well. I think I'll smooth this one out a little bit. So I'm just gonna get subdivide with the default setting just one, and that's gonna smooth out the surface for me. Okay, let me check the info. Uh, it's 1.5. I know it says 4K here. However, when you're gonna import this into game engine, it's not gonna be four, it's gonna be less. So I'm okay with that. It's not too much. Obviously you can optimize it if you want. But I'm just gonna keep it as it is because I think it's actually not too bad. And last thing, I just wanna get axis align just to make sure that it actually sits on the grid i'm gonna set the y to min and now it's uh, aligned properly so when i import this into the game engine it's gonna be sitting exactly um, on the right uh, spot all right so let's go back now to a point jitter and in here you can just tweak this to get a slightly different shapes, but you can see most of those shapes will be okay. Maybe every now and then you might have a pinch somewhere around this area, but I'll just uh, skip it maybe and go for a different one, uh, for a different seed. You can go to uh, this resample maybe in case you want a slightly different or a bit more points at the start, maybe six, but I think sometimes it's just gonna twist the mesh a little bit too much. So I'm going for the low value here because I don't want too many deformations. However, if I want a slightly different look, I can increase the scale through a point jitter. I'm going to keep it at 0.3. Or I'm just going to pick a different seed and that's going to give me slightly different shape. Okay, so overall, I'm quite happy with that shape. I'm going to keep it. Uh, just the last bit, I want to go back to my sweep. And I think they got really cool options here. Uh, let me check. So in here, if we go to the bottom, we've got roll or twist. Let me do the partial twist, maybe. And as you can see, it's going to add a very nice twist to that mesh. Let me preview it. And it goes very nicely uh, like this. You can experiment with that number or maybe disable it if you uh, don't want it. However, I quite like it and I think it looks pretty cool. So I'm just going to add it to the mesh. Okay, so I think that's it for the part one. In the part two, I'm going to isolate one of the edge loops, add twist to it. And I'm going to turn it into the um, a swirl mesh for that tornado. And also we have to create a base uh, for it so we can apply some texture to it and create a little bit of wind effect and um, a little bit more better base for our uh, tornado especially here at the at the bottom all right thank you so much for watching and see you in the next part